Our last lesson in this unit is geometric probability. And just a reminder of what probability is. It's just a number from 0 to 1 that represents the chance that an event will occur. So for example, if I roll two dice and I add up the, um, the two numbers that I get, what's the chance of me rolling a 14? Well, that can't happen because the highest two numbers I can have is 6 and 6. So the highest um, sum I can have is 12. Or we could say, what's the chance of getting flipping ahead if I flip a coin? So that's a 50-50 chance. Or I could say, what's the chance that the sum will rise? And that's almost a certainty, right? Hopefully. So, uh, so this is the spectrum of probability. So we go from totally impossible to almost certain, and then everything in between. So that number between 0 and 1 is our probability of an event occurring. So think about how you found probabilities in the past. All right, well, we're going to do geometric probability, and we're going to do the same thing that you've done before. So for example, when we were doing probability of the heads, we would say, well, there are two possible outcomes, and that would be our denominator, and heads is one of those outcomes. So the probability would be one out of two. All right, so the same idea is that the geometric probability is going to be a ratio, a fraction. All right, so if I say, what is the probability that point K, all right, and point K is just any, we're talking about any point um, on the line, on the segment AB, what is the probability that point K is on CD? So the total possibilities is anything on AB. So we're talking about the length of AB. And then what's the probability of point K being on just this piece, CD? Notice that CD is part of AB. So that would be the numerator. So, for example, if I say find the probability that a point chosen at random on LP is on MN. So LP, it goes from all the way from negative 2 to 10, so that's a total distance of 12. And then MN goes from 1 to 4, so that's a total distance of 3. So I would say the probability that it's on MN would be 3 out of 12, and I can reduce that to be 1 fourth. Now we, we can write it as a fraction, or we can write it as a decimal. So this would be 0.25. Or we can change that decimal into a percentage. So a lot of times we'll say the probability is 25%. So you have a 25% chance of being on that segment MN. Okay, then we can also do, besides just segments, we can do whole shapes. So again, if I say, if I stay in this region J, J, the whole area of J is our total possibilities. And then if I want to know what is the likelihood it will end up in this little bitty spot, M? And that's going to be my numerator, the area of M. So let's do some examples. All right, so I don't know if you've played cornhole or uh, beanbag toss or whatever, but some people call it different things. But if we have one of those boards where there are holes, we have four holes in the uh, board, so we want to know what is the probability of landing on any point on the target, okay, that it goes through the holes. So one, so any one of the holes. So we want to find the area of all the holes, all right, so those holes are in the shapes of circles. So we're going to add up those four circles. That's going to be our numerator. So the area of the four circles. And then we're going to divide by the area of the rectangle. So let's do that. This is going to be very similar to that area worksheet that we've already done in class. So area of a circle is pi r squared. All of the circles have the same radius. So that's pi times 0 0.5 squared. And I'm going to have four of them. So if we do that, that's going to give me 0.25 times pi times 4, which is just pi. And then the area of my rectangle is going to be 3 times 4, 
which is 12. So if I wanted to keep it as an exact answer, I could say pi over 12. If I wanted to get a decimal answer, then that would be approximately 0 0.26, which means it's 26% chance of getting a beanbag through one of those holes. All right, so here's another scenario. So Megan's in Forest Park, and she's going to lay out, get some sun. So she was walking around and found, an, and she wants to find an area that's not in the shade, okay, because she wants the sun. Um, but a lot of those parts were taken, and 25% of the park is paved. So basically, it comes down to this diagram. So if she picks a point at random, what is the probability that she would be in a non-shaded area? So anything in this diagram that's white, we're considering non-shaded, and anything that is blue or light blue or gray is the shaded area. So we want to know what is the probability that she would be in a non-shaded area. Okay, so basically our numerator is going to be this white part. Okay, and our denominator is going to be the whole rectangle. Okay, because she could choose anything in that whole rectangle. So I know that the area of the rectangle is my denominator. That's a total possible spot she could pick. So that's going to be, let's do that real quick. So that's going to be 150 times 300. That one's easy. So the next, on the numerator, we want to do the area of the rectangle, but we're going to subtract the shaded area. So I'm going to subtract the area of that triangle and subtract the area of that smaller rectangle. So I'm going to take my 150 times 300, which, by the way, is 45,000, and I'm going to subtract area of the triangle, so that's going to be 1 half 150 times 120. And then I'm also going to subtract the area of this little bitty rectangle. It's actually a square, even though it doesn't look like it. See how it's the width is 100 and the length is 100, and so base times height. Okay, so let's figure out what that would be. So this is going to be 660 times 150. This is 9,000. And then this is going to be 10,000. So I'm taking my 45,000 minus my 9,000 minus my 10,000. And that's going to leave me with 26,000. All over that, remember 150 times 300 was 45,000. So I'm really just reducing 26 over 45. Which is 26 over 45. So that's my fraction version. If we wanted to get a decimal, that's approximately equal to 0.577. So let's round that up to 0.58. And so that's about 58%. So she's got a 58% chance of getting some sun. All right, let's do one more, and then um, we'll uh, leave the rest for in class. So we're acting on the stage in this diagram. In order to be seen by the audience, you have to stay in the triangular portion. All right, so we want to stay here in that white triangle area. Okay, but you're equally likely to be in any part of the stage. What is the probability that you will not be clearly seen? Okay, so... They want to know what is the probability of ending up in this shaded area. Okay, because then that'll tell us how poorly our audience will experience our play because they won't be able to see us. Someone won't be able to see us. All right, so we know the whole shape is that semicircle. So in the denominator, we're going to do the area, half the area of that circle. Okay, up in the numerator, we're going to take that semicircle, but we're going to subtract the area of the triangle. I started doing the formula. 
I don't want to do that yet. So that's my plan. So I'm going to do one half. Let's see, what's my formula for area of a circle? That's pi r squared. And then don't forget, radius is half of that diameter, so that would be 2.5 squared. And then I'm going to be subtracting the area of the triangle. That base is 3.5. And then how would I know what the height of that triangle is? Keep in mind that the height of that triangle is also a radius. So that's going to be 2.5. And all of that is going to be over the area of the semicircle. So 1 half pi times 2.5 squared. Okay, so let's do that. So 2.5 squared is going to give me 3.125 pi. 2.5 squared gives me 6.25 and then I halved it. So that's where I got 3.125. And then I'm subtracting the triangle and I'm getting 4.375. And all of that is going to be over this 3.125 pi. So since I kind of need a better decimal, I'll go ahead and multiply out by the pi. So 3.125 times pi gives me about 9.817. And I'm subtracting the 4.375. I'm getting 5.442 over 9.817. And this gives me about 0 0.554. All right, so, and that I'm not going to be able to put into a, a fraction. So we'll just call that 0.554, or again, as a percentage, we could call that 55.4%. Okay, so that's not good, that 55% of the time, um, my audience might, be, might not be able to see me. All right, so we will do some more practice with that in class. Make sure to bring your notes.